Have you ever used up a pickaxe and thought to yourself, why am I such a jabroni? Why did I not put mending on that pickaxe? Today, I aim to solve that problem that has plagued so many Minecraft jabronis throughout the years. First off, we're gonna build a house, and then we're gonna stick a mending villager guy in there, and then we're gonna build more houses, and we're gonna put armorers inside them to give me the tools that I need. Let's suit up and get cracking. Archie and I didn't like it at first, but Woody convinced us it's pretty good. Yeah, oh. just see us out there now with picks and shovels. Listen, everybody. New Mox World. This area by the river should do just fine for our mending villagers house. I just need to ditch some of these supplies here and go collect some more before we start to build. We need to get some mangrove logs. That should probably be about enough. Yeah, probably enough. Let's go. Back over here at the job site, we want to just grab some cobblestone and do a quick little layout of the house that we want to build. Something like that should be fine, and we'll just go ahead and start building this up a little bit. Let's add some white concrete and diorite to the mix. That is starting to look pretty good for the foundation of this building, though I believe I've made a horrible miscalculation in the amount of white concrete that I actually need, and will probably need to... yeah. I'll, I'll probably need to generate some more of that. But that should be no problem, I just need to collect a few more resources and put them together to generate the white concrete. After collecting some sand and putting it together with the gravel and white dye that we have, we've created a bunch of white concrete powder, which I can now put into these two spots here, and uh, we'll just do like a pillar up thing, and then we'll knock them all down from the bottom. I really do love getting up high in the world like this, and always having a look, and then just jumping off like this. It's totally safe, as you can see. Now let's start getting that white concrete. Hold on. I am hearing the sounds of tridents hitting around me, and I am not equipped to take on a trident right now. Uh, where is this guy at? Where is he at? Come on. Come on. Show yourself. Show yourself. Show yourself. I want to get that concrete. Okay. Okay. Enough. Enough. I got to deal with this. I just just eat, eat up and, and replenish my my health here a minute because apparently that guy hit me once and it really took off a lot of life let's go ahead and equip the shield and crawl back over here and try to find holy god there he is okay what's he doing what oh he came out he's on fire where's he at is he still on fire he's still on fire oh he's in my boat that's even better that's even better. Trap him in the boat, and he will die of his own accord, and I won't have to do anything that could potentially risk my life. That's right, jerk. That's what you get for throwing tridents at people. And now that that's done, let's just grab these few stragglers here and take a look. How many do we have? That should be a perfect amount. That's great. Let's get back over here and keep building. Let's just go ahead and lay some dark oak in here for the floor. And we'll add some dark oak slabs for the second story floor. And let's add a mangrove door because we need a door for our house. Now 
Now, our mending villager will live along this back wall here, so we need to add some blocks around so that he cannot escape. Now let's start to think about the roof, but it's come to my attention here that I think I don't have enough deep slate, so I think I'm probably going to have to run back over here in a minute and go get a lot more deep slate. I definitely don't have enough. Let's just ditch some of this stuff here and then I will be off and we'll see we'll see where we get with that. This level for mining deep slate should be fine uh, because I am below the area where stone should be generating and we should be getting all deep slate now. Diamonds and gold are always a welcome sight. I will help myself to those, thank you. That looks like an amethyst geode if I am not mistaken and that would be the first one that I've found in this world. This is actually really good because I've been wanting to make some tinted glass. So I'm going to have to come down in here and maybe clear some of this out so that more of these crystals will grow and I can collect them for said tinted glass. So I went ahead and cleared out everything around these amethyst seed blocks. Uh, I also lit the place up a little bit, and I think I'll just collect a few of these crystals maybe to take with me or store down here for for later use. Uh, but this will be really good because now we can have these crystals growing and I can come down occasionally and, har and just harvest them off and use them for the tinted glass that I desire so much. And that little mining trip yielded a decent amount of deep slate, which I mistakenly used my silk touch picks pick to uh, to gather. But no worries, I can just knock down this tower that I made with this to get the cobbled deep slate, which we can then take over and create deep slate tile brick things out of for the house that I am building. Even though it is raining, let's go ahead and get started on this roof, shall we? Well, after a little tweaking and reworking, I think I am now satisfied with the shape that this house is taking. And we'll go ahead and throw a trapdoor up there for the upstairs, and we'll just make sure this trapdoor here will work once the villager is in. That looks perfect. Go ahead and remove it. Now we need to think about getting a villager in here so that we can uh, maybe just replace that. There we go. So that we can get uh, get him trapped and get, you know, the mending uh, books from this guy. And I will go ahead and look for some dirt and a boat. We'll go up and grab a guy. I call him a guy, but it is more of a, you know, a whatever type of guy, a villager. We'll call we'll call them villagers from up at that place there. And then we'll bring him down here in the boat. This is great, we've just acquired our mending villager and we will now bring him down to the house. Let's just block this area up with a little bit of dirt and carefully, surgically remove the boat. There we go. After some encouragement and nudging, we now have our mending villager in place. Well, he's not mending yet, but he will be. I'll just go ahead and clean up this area a bit, and then we will roll this guy until we get a decent mending trade.
Okay, we got mending, and that is not a bad deal. I think that is probably about as low as I'm going to get this villager on that trade for emeralds. So let's think about getting some paper now and, and locking in this guy's trade. Trade locked. Now that this villager's trade is locked as a librarian, I placed a couple composters in here because he will not take those trades. And we'll just, you know, we put a few uh, bushy leaves kind of on top here so that he's got something nice to look at while he is writing up my mending books. Well, I call this a success. So let's hang a sign here for the new house of this mending librarian. We wanna let's ma let's maybe actually type this in the middle. Uh, mending, if I can spell it correctly, mending, mending, librarian. Let's see, how do I spell that? Yeah, li librarian. Close enough. If it's not correct, uh, correct me in the comments. Very good, very good, excellent. I am so excited to get starting with the mending here, and that is most excellent. And my plan, I think, is to build more houses going up this path towards the villager breeder that is at the top of this small hill. That is where the armorers and maybe a Fletch, ooh, a Fletcher with infinity somewhere in here too. Yeah, Fletcher plus a, a librarian with infinity books to sell in one house. That would be pretty cool. And now that I have a few more foundations laid out around the new house behind me, we can actually start thinking about gathering more resources to build more houses. But before we do that, I want to get some emeralds together and purchase some mending books from my new mending friend. I only could get together eight emeralds, which unfortunately is not anywhere near the 16 that I need to buy a book from this guy. So I'm going to need to figure out how to actually, let's just stash these up here with some paper while I'm waiting to get things together so that I can actually purchase some mending books. One thing we can do is that we have some farmers here in farms and they will take trades of food. So let's run around through here, collect up some of the food and see what kind of trades uh, I can get with them and how much emeralds I can get from that. Well, that netted me about 12 emeralds. I do also want to run back over to the sugarcane farm over here and see what it has gathered over time. Hopefully it's something not bad. I can make a decent amount of paper with that to trade with my librarian villager. I will also need a couple books, which I do not have. I thought I had some, but I guess we can make a few more. To do that, I'm going to need some leather. And we do not have a ton of cows left, but let's see what we can get from these guys. That gave me four books. Let's run over and see if there's any chance at all that I could possibly get four mending books with what I have so far. My guess is no, but you never know until you try. That nets me 24 emeralds and a little bit of leftover paper and some books. Uh, now this is only going to give me enough for one mending book until I can get some more emeralds. Very good. But this guy also does efficiency. Efficiency one for 14. That's, again, it's not terrible. This guy is good. I'm, I'm okay with this. Well, 15, that would be great if I had some more emeralds, but I do not. So I will visit you once I have more. 
after doing a bit more trading with these farmers and collecting some of the sugar cane that I had along the river over here, I now have some more paper that I will jump in here. I actually got a decent amount of emeralds right now. Let's see how many more I can collect. Maybe enough that I can get... No. I was hoping to be able to make two more books, but one more book will, I think, be fine. So in this case, I will grab another mending book. That's really great. Please give me the XP. Thank you. And I appreciate your service. I went down to 14. I only need four more emeralds. I could get one more book. But I think in the meantime, I'm going to take this book. I'll go ahead and throw these emeralds up here. I'll grab these two books because I want to apply mending to a couple of my tools, specifically this diamond axe. I don't have silk touch. Hmm, that's... I think I have a silk touch axe. Anyways, I, wanna, I definitely want to put mending on this silk touch pickaxe, and potentially on my fortune three pickaxe as well, unless I have a silk touch axe, which I... Which I do not think I do. Let's run over and have a look, though. It's just as I thought. I don't have a Silk Touch Diamond Axe, but that's okay. I will take this Fortune 3 pickaxe and my Silk Touch pickaxe, and I will apply mending to both of these. Just like so for the Silk Touch pickaxe, and just like so, for the Fortune 3 pickaxe. Very good. Now I can go down to the zombie spawner that I have and fix these up any time I like. We're going to go ahead and, and continue our quest for emerald domination in this world so that I can get a lot more mending books and maybe get some diamond armor and stuff and put mending on that as well so that I don't have to worry about things breaking. I will of course uh, make another diamond pick uh, another diamond axe and look to get uh, silk touch on that. Maybe I can get a silk touch villager once we have a little bit more space for some librarians. Or, or I'll just maybe make a few well I need to uh, level up a little bit before I can make some more axes and see if I get Silk Touch. I think it might be better to just put Silk Touch on this one and and make another one that's efficiency and unbreaking or, or something to that effect. Really, you only need Silk Touch on the axe. This one would be fine as long as it has mending, then we'll be good to go. Now, because I have mending, I think it is only appropriate that I come down and let a few zombies spawn so that I can actually go throw this in my offhand while I swing a sword at these guys and fix up my axe. And now, after a few minutes of listening to these zombies moan and groan, I can come down and take a few swipes at them with this sword and heal up this axe. Well, as you can see, it didn't quite totally heal up the axe, but it did a pretty darn good job, and I'm getting full up on a bunch of junk from these guys. So we'll hang out for a couple more minutes, and I'll take a few, a swipe at a few more zombies just to get this axe to pickaxe to 100%. <laughs> And there we have it. After just a few more minutes, actually not long at all, our pickaxe is 100% and ready to go again. So I was just running around getting rid of some of this inventory that I had in my inventory, and I thought this might be a good time to run over and just double check on the iron farm, which has been running for a very long time in this world now, it seems. I do need to build a structure around this, and that is laid out roughly by the non-spawnable area around here. I'm thinking to build something like a castle or something up around this. It's pretty 
simple iron farm design, why are they not scared right now? Are they all standing directly behind the flower pot? Of course they are. Can you fools... Can you fools start moving around, please? Anyways, whatever. Let's drop down in here at this dangerous part that doesn't even have a door on it. It's kind of scary. But let's see... Let's see how much we've got coming in. So I've got blocks of iron down here because I've been having to condense these down due to how much just keeps coming in. Well, right now I'll go ahead and take all the poppies for sure. But this is not bad. This is very good. I've already got a stack in my in my inventory, so I don't really want to don't really want to take any more right now. But uh, let's. Let's keep this running, and God, normally these guys are not standing all immediately in a row behind there. I think once they're past their socializing time, they'll start to wander a little bit, and then the farm will turn back on. It's it's just because they just happen to all be congregating at a, cer whoops, at a certain time of day. They're directly behind the flower pot, so none of them can actually see the zombie. Kind of hilarious. But let's run over this way while it's pouring and pissing down rain like crazy now. And we'll throw all of this stuff... Carefully. Carefully. If I, if I can avoid dying. And we'll throw all of these poppies into the composter setup that I have over here. Making me... Lots of delicious bone meal. And I think in the meantime, while it's raining, I'm going to clean up the rest of these mangrove trees. Plant some more because we will need more mangrove logs for the roofs of the homes that I'm going to be building over there along the path going up that way. All right, well, that is all done and replanted. There's just a few more leaves from this last uh, mangrove tree that need to despawn. I'm not too concerned about getting those. I've got a ton of stuff out of this. If you go through and clear out with shears, you can get a ton of mangrove leaves. You can get a lot of vines. Those are always very good to have for making mossy cobblestone, mossy stone bricks, anything mossy you can pretty much do with vines. Um, also some moss carpets, that's pretty good. I might use those for something in the future. For right now, we have a decent amount of mangrove logs. Not nearly enough, but that's why I planted these again. After gathering a few more resources and laying out the foundations for these buildings down here and starting to build again, I of course have realized that I've made the horrible mistake of not gathering nearly as many resources as I actually need to complete the buildings going up here. More specifically, I have very little cobblestone, I have very little white concrete, and I have very little deep slate. Uh, I did gather a decent amount of mangrove uh, logs from the area over here, so that's really good and should help out quite a lot with the roofs. But again, I don't have the cobblestone or the white concrete necessary to complete this. So I'm going to go down and mine for some resources, specifically cobblestone. And then I will go out and acquire a lot of sand. And I think I have enough gravel probably to make this happen. And I certainly have enough bone meal to make white dye so that I can make more white concrete. So I'm going to go ahead and get right into that with the quickness. I've come down to do some mining for deep slate, uh, more specifically cobbled deep slate, and I am actually remembering that I have a lot of cobbled deep slate that I was throwing in chests. There's quite a bit of cobbled deep slate here, so I should have no problem collecting enough of that. So as I was mining previously, I remember being around these levels and making myself some notes on signs that I could actually hear skeletons making noises where there it seemed like there's a lot of them so I would like to maybe dig around this area and see what I can find. There is a cave here quite a lot and there's creepers there. I think maybe I'll just close that up. Shine a little light in here. 
I didn't go too far. Uh, I don't think there would be a ton of skeletons making noise in there, but you never know. That could be what I was actually hearing. Oh boy, I don't know how much further I want to go this way. Let's just, uh, let's close that area off for now. Maybe we'll head back this way. Okay, there's some dripstone here, which is making me think there's probably a cave very close. Having gone past this dripstone and not seeing any more above me, my guess is that there's a cave somewhere right here. That's, it sounds like there's a lot of skeletons, and my guess is that the cave is beneath me here which maybe makes me think if I'm going to pop into a skeleton thing, I maybe want to go down one level. Oh, there's the cave. Okay. There's definitely skeletons in there. Uh, I closed it up before he could shoot me. Oh yeah, okay. If there is a spawner around here... It There must be, yep, there's one right there. This looks like the site of a spawner. Carefully clear some of this area out. We know it must be open over here because there are skeletons wandering around over there. And it sounds like there are a lot of zombie, <laughs> zombies, skeletons inside there. It must be a skeleton spawn. I can hear zombies too, but as, as many bones are rattling, it must be the skeleton spawner. So let's do something like this, where we carefully take out a few blocks on the corner here. Yeah, there we go. Excellent. So I'm just gonna do my thing and try to kill that guy there. And then very carefully... Oh, I can reach the chest from here too. That's convenient. What would also be convenient is if I could make this thing stop spawning skeletons. I'm just going to go ahead and seal this back up for now. And in the future, we'll come down here and work with this skeleton spawner. That's that's legitimately good. I I don't necessarily need a skeleton spawner, but, uh, but it is nice to have uh, addition to the world and will give us a, a good project to work towards. We have a wandering trader that has shown up. What do you have for me? I don't need anything that you're selling. However, there are some boats here that maybe you guys would be interested in. Would, how, have you ever seen a boat? Come over here, let me, let, me, let me try to interest you in a, where the hell are you going? Let me try to interest you in a boat. Whoops, now I have two more leads. Thanks to you. Uh, come over here, come over here. Okay, uh, 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 come here, come here. There we go. You hang out there until, you know, until you can despawn or whatever it is you do. Thank you for visiting. Well, after going out and trekking for a very long time to get, you guys are still here, that's really good. After going out and trekking a long time to get a lot of sand, I have actually acquired a lot of sand and I've been storing it down here. I kind of stripped down a small island of stuff and yeah, got myself a decent amount of sand for me to put back into my inventory because I'm going to go make some white concrete. Given my run-in with the trident guy before while I'm generating white concrete, I have decided to place my white concrete generator in a much safer area over here next to the farmers instead of over there where I can get the tridents thrown at me. After doing some resource gathering, I believe that now I have plenty of white concrete for sure, plenty of deep slate and cobbled deep slate, uh, and plenty of diorite, plenty of dark oak, plenty of spruce and mangrove. I do have some more mangrove logs over there in case I need them, uh, but I think that should be more than enough for now. I also made a slight detour while I was uh, away gathering all these resources and did kind of a little thing on my own where I took all of the seeds and stuff that I had gathered and I planted all... Oh god, these guys are very loud. 
Oh no, there's a whole village of villagers inside there. Let's come over here where I can't hear them. I planted out a bunch of rows of wheat, carrots, uh, beetroots, and potatoes down in here. I also went and got some melon seeds, and this is all coming together over here. Wow, this is all actually grown and ready. I didn't even put water sources down here. I just went ham on planting every friggin' seed that I had. The foundations for the new houses have been built. And now that all of these houses have roofs attached, we can populate these houses with villagers. And now this suburb is filled with armorer villagers. This should provide me with all of the armor that I need. This is really great. We've got 10 houses with armorer villagers inside. And then we've got one house with a Fletcher and an infinity librarian for the bow and arrows that the Fletcher here will make for me. Maybe he will, maybe he won't, we'll see. We'll see how that goes. Maybe he'll give me bow and arrows. That would be nice, but I seriously doubt he will. But that's fine, I can just make them. And this guy can give me the infinity. One thing this suburb is lacking is a decent path and a little bit of landscaping. This place is looking so, so good. I'm so excited to show this to you guys. Let's let's come down here and take a look. Got some shaders on. Look, you've got the farmers still hanging out in there. Got a wandering trader. He's hanging out, but check this out. I've thrown a lot of bushes. I put a, I put a nice little path in here with some mossy cobblestone, some coarse dirt, some a few little path blocks here and there. I didn't want to go crazy with the path blocks. Uh, I wanted it to be more non-path blocky but i got a lot of flowers put a little little uh, dark oak with some uh cherry blossom leaves on there and coming up in here oh man look at this look at this it's so cozy it's so nice everything's lit up nicely i think this is looking really fantastic and we've got a bunch of uh, villagers in here who are armorers and a lot of them are experts but a lot of them are also oh man it's so cool all the little details in all these areas i love this i love this horse dirt a lot of these guys are masters and they've got diamond armor that we're gonna buy for way more emeralds than i have currently but i was actually able to while i was doing this get these guys leveled up quite a bit which i think is pretty cool we got a couple of guys living over here too they're all just a slightly some of the houses are the same some are slightly different i'm really loving how this looks i hope you guys are really loving it too oh man look look check this out check this out right on the edge here you jump up there's like a drop off that guy keeps wandering around i got another another armorer in here all the way up through we got like 10 or 11 of these armors in here. i don't even know i wasn't i lost count when i was doing it and then it comes up here to the villager breeder and we'll kind of work this area over a little bit. I do want to kind of put something under here, maybe store some stuff. Got nothing really in here now. Can maybe make a storage area out of that. I don't know. We'll, we'll see in the future. But man, this is really coming together so nicely. Oh, look, look at the farmers down there doing their jobs. That's the way it's supposed to be. And we got a lot more villagers to work with. Oh man, I can't, I can't wait to get them all jobs, get them in homes. Get them, get them really working for us well. Look at that. We got a bunch of crops to harvest down there. We got our farms over there working around. Oh, and I'm, I'm so excited about this. This has just been a blast to build this so far. And I can't wait to find a bed and get to sleep. 
before monsters come and destroy all of my hard work. But I also, what's pretty cool is in every single one of these houses, I've got a bed. Just in case, if I'm in here trading with these guys, it turns nighttime, I want to be able to get into a bed. I can't rely on these jabronis to help me out with monsters whatsoever, because they will just... I can't even see that out that window. Because they... or that one. Because they won't do crap to help me. But that's okay. I don't expect them to. Well, I think that's where I'm going to end it for today. Thank you to anyone who watched and hit that like button, subscribe and all that stuff. It's it's really a cool thing for you to do. I'm really going to like this. I loved building this. A lot more building to come. We got a lot done building in this episode. It was actually a lot of work, but I think you all know that. So this is Newmark signing off for episode 11. Thanks a lot.